does. Welcome back. Live at noon. Big decision came down the course this morning. Joined now by Sid Ryan. He is a president of the Ontario Federation of Labor. And Sid, uh, you already have been speaking with George Lagan Giants. You said that the fine of $200,000 against the company is, uh, was, was simply not uh, sufficient. Yeah. Um, obviously, you would have liked more. But first of all, let's just make it clear. That fine goes into the, into the victim's fund. It does not go directly to the families or to... Uh, oh, not not even all the fines. The, 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 there were fines... The uh, part of it. Only, yeah. They, so, but in the criminal side of it, it was $200,000 fine. Yeah. But there's a surcharge on top of that of 25%. So it's only that 25% that goes into the victimization fund. So it's really only a pittance. Um, it's $30,000 to be, to, be, to be precise. So when you're critical of the fine, the amount of the fine levied, you're not saying, well, the family deserves more, a life is worth more than fifty thousand dollars. You're saying that it should be bigger because of a deterrent factor. The deterrent factor. Yeah, absolutely. And, and basically saying that fifty thousand dollars for a life uh, is the wrong signal to be sending to employers in this province. Basically, now the price of a life. So, you, so somebody dies due to negligence in your in your factory or in your workplace. Um, the most it can now be expected to be fined is fifty thousand dollars. That to me oh, could no, be that, built that, into the that, cost of doing business. No, absolutely. But is that right? The most. I mean, it can be. It could be in another case going up. But let's just talk about this case because in this specific one, there was no trial. The issue. It was, uh, right. it was, uh, you know, they, they pled guilty right. on these charges, correct? Right. Yeah, but this is now a, bre a groundbreaking case. This now oh, sets yes. precedent. It's the only precedent that's ever been set in Ontario. First time ever that the criminal code was used to take an employer into court and, and find them uh, guilty but do of criminal we know, negligence. do we know that it was the employer? The employer may have looked at that and said, you know what? I'm just going to, on lawyer's advice, I'm just going to plead guilty rather than go through trial because... But do we know then that it was the employer and not the employees who were up there? Um, Maybe they were up there saying they didn't put on this. Well, the, the only ones that were, I mean, first off, was the Mr. Schwartz, who is the owner of the company, the CEO. He pleads guilty, um, I guess, on behalf of his company, Metron. Right. Um, and then the only other culpability, if you will, in all of this was the supervisor um, who allowed workers to go out onto the scaffolding, himself included, and he, he loses his life also, um, with uh, only two harnesses, safety harnesses, and there were five people out on the scaffold. So that's a complete and total violation of the of the law. And that's where the, the criminal negligence comes into play. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, if, it, if the employer only provided two state safety harnesses for five employees, uh -huh. there was a problem there. No uh -huh. question about it. Uh -huh. And also, they were migrant workers. Yes, what they do were. What do you say about that, sir? Well, it's a possibility that as migrant workers, they did not um, fully understand that in this province, you've got the right to refuse unsafe work. Um, were they informed of that? Because they came in as migrant workers. Who knows? Um, did they uh, understand it? Even if they were informed, did they understand it? Because English is their second language. So I do think language probably came into this uh, and as a result of it now I see that the Ministry of Labour is making certain that um, the Occupational Health and Safety Act um, is now going to be printed in several different languages um, and part of the requirement of, so there's been a lot of changes right, as a result of yeah. this accident, part of the requirement now is going to be that people be informed in their own uh, native tongue if you will if they're, if they're migrant workers. As long, even if there's one life a year lost, that's one life to me, you and I agree on that, but I mean Overall, and you've been in the labor movement a long, long time, are worker conditions getting better in Ontario? Well, if you look at the stats, you'd have to say no, because on average, we're killing between 80 and 90, on average, every year, year in, year out, for, for decades now. And on average, there's about 250,000 workers' compensation claims every single year. Now, some of them are minor, but some of them are really serious, like people losing their limbs and so on. And there's about 450 workers every year die as a result of occupational diseases. And that's constant now, and has been constant for about 10 years. So I don't know, if to, I, I cannot honestly say, if I look at the stats, that workplaces are in fact getting safer. And that's why we were looking to this piece, uh, this judgment today, to be to send that real strong deterrent. You know, I know the judge says, look, this employer probably doesn't have the capability of paying a million dollar fine. So consequently, he sets it at, at 200,000. But he also had an opportunity to incarcerate this individual, because the law says he could have gotten up to 20 years. And instead, he gives him a $200,000 fine. I think that's the wrong signal to be sending to employers in Ontario. Sid Ryan, I'm out of time. Always enlightening to see you and thanks very much for coming. Thanks you. Okay. Pleasure. Okay. Okay. As pleasure as always. We're going to take a break. When we come back, a new study. Nick Kelly is going to be here talking about the mom versus 